Another ninja training session. This one is not going to be as technical as some of our other conversations are, but instead, this one is going to be incredibly practical because we're going to be talking about what does it take to get recertified, some knowledge that we have about this, and also just kind of, you might say, a kick in the pants to let's get this certification stuff going again. We'll talk about all the details. So you're not going to have to worry about any of that, but the basic nutshell is that, well, life has been good. Life has been very good. Um, but there's been some changes that are coming down the pipeline. And these changes, well, let me just say, like, like I said, life has been good up until here recently. We've been waiting for this moment to happen. <clears throat> and just like Mr. Bean, life has been very good. However, as we continue forward, um, we're going to hit the expiration date. And we all got this email, was it May or June, that this is going to be happening. And I am here to talk about what to do to avoid us getting to January 15th or January 1st, actually, and say, okay, well, we have a problem on our hands. We are no longer certified on this given platform. This is the topic of the conversation today. But before I actually jump in and talk too much about this, I have something I am really excited to talk to you first about, and that is that I'm not alone. Now, I have somebody else in this conversation here with me that uh, you've probably not, most likely not seen yet. Uh, you've maybe not, ha have, haven't even heard their name, and um, so this might come as a little surprise to you, but it is a good surprise and that I am really excited to bring this person on. Um, this person, I, I'm, I'm getting the excitement going here, folks, in case you didn't notice. This person has um, many years of agency, uh, integrator experience, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they've worked at quite a number of really big name companies and they have joined our ranks as the author who is in charge of building out training material. With that, I'd like to welcome Chris Nanninga uh, from the southern places of Missouri. So we're actually not too far away. And Chris, it is really good to have you on here again, my friend. Um, why don't you maybe give the 60-second uh, overview to uh, your career, I guess. Like, what, what are the highlights of your career here? Uh, sure. Well, uh, I mean, my long software development career has never involved being live on a webinar. Uh, that's the <laughs> important thing here. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, if, if at any point during this, if I don't seem to know what I'm talking about, everybody can just chalk it up to that. Cause, okay. uh, cause you know, uh, this is a new experience for me. Uh, I, I'm, I've been a software engineer for going on 20 years, I guess. Uh, and I got into Magento literally in 2011, right? Uh, not too far from the beginning. Uh, and that's been basically my whole, my whole uh, software, software world since then. So over 10 years now, since Magento one, uh, and uh, I've, I've worked at three different, uh, different agencies that focus on, on Magento, and have done everything from uh, just he heavy software development work, front end and back end and everything to mentoring other developers and to all the way to, you know, being tech lead on big projects and kind of shepherding the whole, the whole shebang and architecting requirements and everything. So I've, I've had, uh, had uh, exposure to pretty much the whole, whole production cycle on, on uh, the Magento platform. And that's, and that's one of the reasons I'm really excited about you as you've, you're, as you have been stepping into this role very well, uh, is honestly speaking, you have putting very well, actually, uh, I should say, objectively speaking, you have more experience than I do. Uh, it's just the way to face it. Like you, you've been in the industry longer. You are, um, you have seen more projects, you have seen more difficult requirements, uh, and you've, you've done it all. So that's the depth and the breadth of knowledge that you are bringing into, uh, what you are helping equip other developers with is really exciting to me. And uh, yeah, I am, I'm super excited to have you on and to um, yeah. So we're going to, we'll jump into this. So um, 
let's quickly see, uh, see who is on here. So I see people are filtering in. That was kind of our way of introductions. Hopefully most everyone is here. So if you are here, don't be shy and uh, make sure to drop us uh, just say uh let's well let's we i usually come up with a couple questions for this where are you located i was like that one and um how was your weekend that would we could do that and i'll start with that actually chris how about you start how was your weekend we could oh uh you know most weekends i don't have much to report but uh okay. my oldest oldest daughter's 13th birthday was this weekend oh that and sounds like a good uh, weekend she it was a pretty relaxing weekend but she's a budding uh, artist and I got her a I got her a drawing tablet and some some oh, nice. course some courses for some digital art software for her for her birthday so nice I, it's been really fun like I I got to learn a, a bunch about creating creating digital paintings and I don't have any artistic ability but I was like this is really fun <laughs> and that's something that I can kind of like do with her that's awesome so that was that was my weekend that's great um, and just to remind everybody uh, we are. As you're filtering in here, it's great to have you here. Make sure to drop uh, in the comments, whatever platform you're on, uh, your uh, where where you're from, what country is fine. Don't give us your address, like your street address. We don't need that. Nobody needs that. Um, and and as well as your uh, what? How was your last? How was your weekend? For us here in the states, we had Labor Day, so we had a three day weekend, which is always nice. Um, I was painting, and you can probably see some evidence here on my hands. I don't know. I don't do a very good job cleaning paint off my hands. Although I was painting again last night. So we're trying to get a couple of rooms uh, painted in our house. And I figured up that the amount of, you know, so you have the, like the, the main wall color and then you have the um, like our, the, our trim in most, most of our house is white. And so you have to like paint that edge, that hard edge between the wall color and the white, like the, for the baseboard. I figured up, I have more of that. What's called cutting in. I have more of that cutting in, in that one little room that I do in my entire living room. And it's a small room. I'm like, man, it just takes so much time. So anyways, yeah, that's what I spent my weekend doing. Oh, Jerry's painting too. Wow, that's awesome. Very good. Hey, Mike, uh, Terrace, very good. Oh, Terrace from Ukraine. Wow. Our, as always, our hearts go out to you guys. Um, I haven't been following as much lately what's been going on. I was I was very much into it there for a while. I had to kind of back off uh, just because I was, it was, yeah, that was, it was getting hard for me to, to follow everything. But I hope everything is, well, I know it's not good, but I, I've heard tidbits that there is some momentum for the side of Ukraine, and that makes me that makes me happy to to hear that. Okay, uh, let's. Oh, before I jump in, I do want to quickly call out that we have something coming in the pipeline here of September twenty third, and that is our twenty twenty two developer report. So this is a sneak preview of what this is going to look like. We have, um, we've pulled out a whole bunch of metrics and actually we have more report information coming down the pipeline. So we only re are releasing like, I don't know, two thirds of the information, maybe a little less than that um, here in this report. And we have more stuff that's coming here throughout the rest of this year. Uh, this is really good, solid stuff. Uh, and it's not just like statistics. Oh, here's what other people are doing. This is what we are uh here is the actions you can take now to improve your experience as a developer, as well as here is what we predict coming here in the next year or two that you'll probably see more of. So in other words, watch out for this stuff and uh, keep an eye on it because you'll probably, not now, but you're probably wanting to be jumping on the bandwagon eventually for this. So I'm really excited. It'll be available September 23rd. We'll let you know about it um, when that time comes. Um, Chris, I don't know. You want to jump in and talk about um, what we're going to talk about today. Oh, what would you like me to talk about? Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, I think I had the same reaction as everybody when I first got my, uh, the emails about my certifications mm -hmm. expiring. Oh yeah. I, uh, I have all the Adobe certifications and I got most of them before they were Adobe certifications, like in the old names in the Magento days. And yep. so, and so I was like, that's a lot of certifications to, uh, to have to renew. And I, I think I'm, I think I've renewed one so far. So the end of the year is coming. Uh, and I've got <laughs> I've got a lot to make a decision on. Uh, I, I was waiting for quite a while to figure out like, oh, OK, when when do the renewals exams come where, mm -hmm. where we can take some shortened version of the exam uh, that's easier and just and just renew it. Um, but I haven't seen any such thing. So yeah, we'll talk I'm about that here later up. because <laughs> there isn't such a thing as, as you're saying. Right. Yeah, exactly. And. Um, it's unfortunate, but I think some of this is just 
there's so much work to it to integrate these two companies. What didn't that happen? Acquisition happened in 2018 or is that 2019? And we're four years later. Oh man, Three you're asking four? the wrong person. I flesh things from my cash too fast. It's like <laughs> always belong to Adobe. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, well, that's crazy that it didn't. I, I I think that was I think that was been 2019 because 2020 was kind of that first would have been that first Adobe plus Magento like at Adobe Summit. And then COVID came in and crashed everybody's party. I so I I think it was 2019. But yeah, I mean it's it just takes time to to join these organizations together and and um yeah I think and we're we're seeing we're we're seeing uh, progress in that direction, which is great. Here was I, I have to pull this up here quickly for everybody. Um, here's that email that you probably got yourself. And um, it, it was one of those moments in coming was just like uh, we bought a house uh, back in 2020 and um, we bought it knowing the air conditioner was on the fritz. It was, yeah, it was about to go and it went like a week or two ago. So, you know, it's just one of those inevitabilities that it was going to come. Adobe said it's coming. You all know it now. It's in your inbox. Uh, and the goal of this conversation is to help you avoid getting your certification expired Um but I'm going to present to you the bad news up front. And the bad news is you have to go take, retake the whole freaking test again. Sorry. <laughs> there's, there's no other way to put it than that. So if you're hoping for good news out of Chris and I today, you're not getting it um, because there is no good news in that way. So um, with the bad news out of the way, you have to go full to retake the full test. We're going to walk you through everything that's happening uh, with these certifications and the process that you can take in order to uh, Get up to speed, get these tests knocked out as quickly as possible. Uh, Chris, do you want to walk through the um, the uh, new test editions? Oh, I'll have to do it from memory. I don't have a, I don't have a material in front of me. But oh, no, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put the slides up for you. So front end's new. We have the uh, we have the professional front end. Yeah, look, three new ones under professional. Mm -hmm. Front end's new. Uh, there's never been a professional version of business practitioner before. So that's new. Mm -hmm. And then they're adding cloud cloud content to the developer certifications. Like there's two different tracks for each one mm -hmm. now for professional. Is it just professional and expert? Yep, uh, just a cl professional cloud expert. version yep. and a non-cloud version. So cloud was a, its own certification before. And, that's and right. now we have now we have the possible track of developer with cloud. Which I find really interesting because. Um, yeah, so if you want to get the cloud credentials you have to then go to retake the whole test um as opposed to you know just take or, you know basically developer plus a separate test which is kind of like what they already have right now but cloud will be retired i confirmed that i had a great conversation with um ayana nickerson yesterday who does head up some of this heads up all the i think adobe certifications for sure aem and commerce at least uh just a wonderful wonderful person um then she said that cloud, even though it is currently available right now, cloud will be retired. So uh, if you want to take it, I suggest you schedule your exam like right now and you try to get it knocked out like as quickly as possible. Uh, but that test is going to be retired in favor of um, what we saw here, the um, professional um, developer with cloud, as well as the expert developer with cloud. Those are the ones that are taking over that. And I believe master architect also has some cloud topics on it, naturally speaking, because that always has been about commerce edition, not just open source only, um, expert and the, uh, and professionals still remain open source only, obviously with the exception of this, um, E716 and E717, which also have, um, cloud on there, which is like commerce. So, um, those would be some key uh, differentiators there. <clears throat> but as far as um, updates go, yeah, there there are quite a few number of uh, prof new professional tests. Um, expert remains basically the same with the only exception of developer with cloud. Uh, so um, if you are wanting to do that, personally, I if you have cloud experience, I would recommend everyone just go ahead and take that cloud exam. It would have been a good S announcement to get before I went and took the professional exam again. Because now uh, I do, yeah. do the cloud version now. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And you probably ace it. You've done enough work with uh, the cloud. With cloud. Um, because the other nice thing is for you test takers, uh, cloud accounts for 20 to 30% of the questions on those tests. So basically, it's still the same, what, 50, 60 questions. But they have, basically, they have taken out 
a number of those uh, questions for, that was, well, they've taken it out a number of the questions that would have been in that same slot. I don't know if I'm making sense. So uh, we now have what 25% of that test now cloud only, which means there are fewer questions asked about the rest of the topics, which again um, makes, I think it could make for an easier test. All that to say. Although I will also add is that cloud is the only test ADO E706 was the only test that I have failed um, when I have failed the first time. So um, cloud is no joke. Make sure to prepare for it adequately. Um, and we'll be talking about this more later, but I will say we are going to be coming out with an offering for cloud to help you come up to speed. So you would be, have basically a course for, for professional developer or expert developer, and then we will have a course for cloud. So you can kind of, you can combine those two and you can pass 717 or 716. <clears throat> cloud, cloud's just a very easy it's a very easy thing to just get exposed to a little bit of it in practical real world mm -hmm. scenarios. I think like you can right. deal with cloud for a long time and basically just be doing deployments and, you know, normal things and, and not get exposed to a lot of those things that are on the exam. That's right. Yeah. Well, and, I, and that's obviously their goal is to make things more practical. And, I, and in my experience, cloud is, it's more knowable, right? I mean, it's much more of a defined, right? Uh, as opposed to say expert or even master, worst case. Like, I mean, you're covering millions of lines of code that you have to have at least a reasonable handle on, at least the general ideas and workflows as opposed to cloud is much more defined in scope. Um, so it's by virtue of that, it's more knowable, but we can't be deceived by that thinking that it's easy. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, ADOS E17, the architect, um, this is, uh, has been recently, uh, fairly recently within the last month or two, somewhere in there, uh, has been updated. So um, this is, we're seeing a lot of uh, demand for this test. Uh, so we are, uh, well, I'm guessing I'm jumping ahead, so I won't say that. Um, basically, this is just the new version of the test. Uh, it's much more, my understanding is it's much more in line with the idea of an architect mentality. Previously, it was um, in the previous bygone days, it was called um, Professional Developer Plus. Um, were you going to say something, Chris? Oh, no. I was just echoing. Okay. I was okay. remembering yeah. the days of Plus. Yes. Yeah. Develop, professional Developer Plus. And, and it lived up to that name. Like it was like Professional Developer, now expert. And it was like tough, tougher. Uh, architect, when, when Adobe changed things up and the architect label applied to that level of test it was kind of like shoehorned in and it didn't really the content on the test didn't really fit well that's now changed and it's much more architect style so a little bit less on the code but more about architecture and uh, methodologies and again a little bit less on the code side you had that one right chris i the architect? do i do but it was that back in the developer plus days so you know it might be uh, quite a, quite a bit different composition these days nice Okay. It's interesting. I mean, like the, what what they used to call solution specialist is business practitioner now, right? Yep, that is so correct. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting having this now third designation of not developer, not business practitioner, but architect. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so it's I only might, at the master I might, level. I might get a surprise uh, with the questions on that one when I go to go to re-up. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, hey, Joseph. Hey, good to see you, my friend. Um Yes, and you have a very good point, and that's exactly what we'll be talking about here later and recommending. Um, yeah, so great. Uh, actually, let me just throw this up here so everybody can see it. So basically, the way Joseph is going to do this is he has, call it every certification, but with the way that the renewals work, unless you're like Chris and you kind of need to have all the certifications for each one of the tests that you're building just to say that you've done it, um, there's kind of no reason to get or keep all three of them again yeah there's there's not a huge amount of need for that so if you just go for the top top one there and you'll be probably uh, happy with that okay uh continuing on what about cloud well as we kind of talked about here earlier uh let me get this pulled up here Cloud is <clears throat> going to be retired soon. I had a conversation yesterday with Ayana about this. Uh, it's going to be retired, and instead they are replacing it with these two combo tests. Uh, so we have the 716 and 717, and I think I got those backwards. It's actually 717 for professional, 716, doesn't matter. Um, so these are going to be 
a little, again, 25% of the test, roughly, give or take, is focused on cloud. The other, the rest of, the rest of it is going to be focused on um, the key areas uh, of expert or professional. So um, one thing I wanted to call out, though, is the differences in study guides. And this brings up a interesting topic for studying. Um, I did an exercise yesterday where I compared um, professional professionals uh, cloud topics and experts cloud topics. And basically expert was had the same topic as professional plus a few extras, of course. Uh, but there was difference in terminology. So again, calling this out here, we have um, we have the uh, describe branching using UI and versus demonstrate understanding of branching using UI. So in my opinion, describing something is like maybe a sentence or something like that. It, it's fairly easy. Demonstrate, on the other hand, is a much deeper knowledge. So demonstrate understanding of. It's in much deeper knowledge. So you're going to want to go deeper and further on this type of a topic. Again, it's the idea between the comparison between professional and expert. Professional has much more what I would say is memorization style questions. So um, we have the differences between um, or what, um, okay, branching using UI. So there might be a question about what buttons are available to do this or what um, workflows are available in or in for branching in uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud UI um, or what uh, what steps does it take to create a new branch? <clears throat> and uh, those are very, fairly easy to memorize. Uh, if somebody has exposure to cloud, it's going to be really easy to get in there and do that uh, and to know that. Uh, Honestly, you might be able to prepare for those in, say, 25% of the amount of time as it would take to demonstrate an understanding of X, Y, or Z. Now, to demonstrate an understanding in this branching example would be, okay, what happens if we have merge conflicts? What happens when, um, when there is a, uh, and actually that, my other example, I'll, uh, left my mind. <clears throat> Basically, the idea is we have to get a lot deeper uh, with these type of topics. Um, Chris, if you have any ideas as far as that, I my mind just blanked. Yeah, I mean, my, I try I try to like go back into my memory and the kind of questions I've seen on the exams and kind of match them up to mm -hmm. these verbs. But uh, like me, I, I would I would imagine demonstrate when you when you get those questions that are like, here's a scenario. Mm -hmm. And what would you do in that scenario? Uh, might That's fall right. more in the category of demonstrate than just kind of like uh, identifying the, the different components of the system. That's right. That's and good. probably Thank also you. those questions that get more into the minutia of, okay, like, you know, mm -hmm. this, you know, this is in this area of the system, but what does that attribute of that XML do? Is it this attribute or that attribute? I imagine fall more <clears> in <throat> demonstrate. Yes, I, I think you're hundred percent right. And you had, you kid on the keyword I was looking for is the scenario. Um, and that's, you're going to be much, the scenario, as we've extensively talked about, is basically here's a story, although it's not like a fun story to read. This is one of those really difficult stories, usually. And you have to work through, okay, given the set of input parameters, what's going to be the result of it? So it could be an error that you get while in, in the branching UI, like when merging code or working or creating a new environment, whatever, like that. And then you have to say, okay, what is wrong with this? what causes this error or how do we resolve this error? So it's very different. Um, and those demonstrate questions are probably <laughs> going to be the questions that always have that, uh, that, that like uh, keeping blank in mind, right? Yeah, oh yes. You'll, you'll get keeping maintainability in mind or keeping extensibility in mind because you might have questions that multiple questions, uh, answers that are right, but one mm -hmm. of them is the right one for main, for keeping maintainability in mind. That's right. Oh, I hate those questions. <laughs> those are because I, yeah, if it, it, it feels like it becomes subjective, the idea that it's is that it's not subjective, but it really feels like it's subjective at that point. And I do not like subjective test questions. No, <laughs> and I like I. I mean, I've done pretty well in most of the exams, but uh, you know, it, there's always at least like a third of the questions I feel like I'm guessing. Yeah. But uh, but then I get my results and I'm like, I guess I wasn't guessing as much as I thought. So just like that, <laughs> that hands-on experience that you get yep. kind of gets you in the pattern of thinking of Magento. Absolutely. That is absolutely critical. Uh, and 
You are 100% right. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Let's talk about recertification. So again, this comes from my conversation yesterday with Ayana um, Nickerson at Adobe. Um, and there is nothing out there quite yet for recertification. So I, I wish I could tell you that boy um, here, well, already available is uh, renewal certifications that cost what 50 bucks and they have like 20 questions and you know, you can pop through that and get everything renewed. That's just not how it is at this point, unfortunately. So um, they're working hard at this, uh, but it, it takes time. I mean, they their team yeah, has a lot of certifications to babysit now, and it just it takes a lot of time. So um, they're going to, as of 2023, um, they're going to start working with Adobe Experience League, which is basically free training. Uh, there's some videos in there, that sort of thing, but it's, but if you, as you watch 10 hours and I don't know if it's 10 hours in a year, 10 hours, every two years or whatever, if you watch 10 hours of something, um, that will qualify you to renew your certification. Um, so there'll be some quizzes, that sort of thing. So it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, but at, uh, but 10 hours and you should get it. Uh, Robert asked, will this ever be put in place? Um, I'm not here to say yes or no, but that is something I know that they're working very hard on. Uh, and they said, um, basically in early 2023. So, um, I, so, again, I, yeah, I mean, it sounds like the situation for all of us is basically like not this round, all of our, all of our certifications are expiring mm -hmm. December 31st That's right. this year. And we got to retake those tests. Right. But then next round, That's right. maybe that's next round, maybe. And, you know, feel free to reach out to people very kindly, graciously on Twitter. And there might be a case to be made for asking for a six month extension, of the certifications. I'm not, you know, there's Adobe listens. And I, that's one thing I've appreciated about them, especially on the certification side. They're, they're good people. They listen. And, um, if we are polite and kind as a community, understand they have a lot on their plates. Um, I know this has been communicated for a long time, <clears throat> but, uh, it's, it would be something that as a community to kindly put out there that, Hey, uh, we would be grateful for a, a few month extension, I don't, I wouldn't plan on anything happening, but at least we can make our voices heard in a kind way, uh, because that will definitely save some time and ultimately expense on these renewals. Um, and like I said earlier, there's no plans for the renewal exams, um, at this point, And it's basically going to be the Adobe experience league, uh, with the continuous education, continuous learning. And to be really frank, Again, I get why we have these recertifications. It's important to keep up to date. Um, if a if a contractor comes into your home, plumber, electrician, me mechanical, they have to have continuous education every X number of years in order to keep their license up. And while we're not working with electricity or, well, I guess kind of we are, um, not really, but um, like while well, we're not working in circuit breaker panels or uh, working on plumbing or you know sinks or toilets or whatever. Um, I, I do believe it's very important for us to continue in this because ultimately that's how we do better for the people we're talking, we're working for. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about some strategies. What does it take to get recertified? Uh, and as we have very clearly said, there is no shortcut right now. I wish I could say there was, but there is no shortcut. So, with that in mind, let's, well, with that in mind, and also keeping in mind that I know every one of you are busy. I've honestly never met someone who is not busy. And I know they exist. I know plenty of them exist in this world, but I don't really seem to meet many of those people, at least here in the States. And um, we have plenty to do. And many people would rather not spend all their day and evenings studying for a test. Oh, we got some, uh, one second here. There we go. Uh, I have some other uh, guests joining our chat, which is always uh, no fun. Anyways, um, let's talk about strategy. So I'm going to say the my official recommendation here is this. Um, and obviously, if money is really tight, then uh, this doesn't necessarily apply. But uh, for there's a lot of companies that, well, most companies should be encouraging. Let me just put it this way getting and keeping your certifications. It does not look good for a company to have uh, 50 certifications uh, December 31st and one certification on after that. So um, this is for the agency service integrators, whatever, like 
this is really important for, uh, for each one of you. And ultimately, um, every hour that somebody spends studying is an hour off the clock. It's very valuable. So I am not denying the value of that. However, um, one thing just to consider, uh, you know, giving your billable hourly rates, it might not be bad to have somebody just go take the official test. Just go take it. Um, uh, the one that you want to renew on. And if you pass fantastic, like in other words, you're already there. Like you have that knowledge, working knowledge every day, which is a really good metric, I think, for um, team leads and all that stuff to know really what where people are actually at on the team. Take that, take the official test as the practice test, and see how you do. If you fail it, not a problem. You have the list of all the topics in your head now that are that have been hammered and obviously the questions the second time you take it will not be the same so don't like try to go through and memorize them and that would be um that's not necessarily ideal but you're going to find your sticking points you're going to understand very very well the challenges that you're facing here so um it's kind of like a bit of a gamble uh but at the end of the day i think it's a good gamble to take you know yourself best if you feel like you haven't been doing this line of work much in the past six months. You feel like you're really rusty on it. Well, that might not be the best option, but for most of you who are participating in this conversation, I think you're, you're probably there. Just go ahead and take it and don't beat yourself up. If you fail, what do you think, that's Chris? The, that's the thing uh, that, I mean, the, the, to the best of their ability, they're building the certification exams to really test your practical knowledge spent mm -hmm. developing with the platform. And so if you're doing that, that's the best preparation you can have. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that's a perfectly valid strategy to jump right in and, and, and see what your level of knowledge is compared to the test. Mm -hmm. Now, can you clarify us for us? You said, uh, it's a bit of a gamble. So there's, I, I, I guess if you take the, if you take the test and fail, uh, it's just, it's full price again to take mm -hmm. the test again. That's right. Gotcha. Yep. There's no, there's no discount, uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, there used to be, but there's no no longer any discount. You, you fail, you just have to go get another voucher and try it again. Gotcha. It, it could still be a valid strategy, though, if you really, if, especially if you've never gotten exposure to what the tests are like, like the, that's right, the format that the questions <clears throat> take and everything. Yep. I'll take I'll take one of the tests, and I literally, I mean, like you you got a proctored exam and you can't take notes or anything, but I'll literally sit there and and men, make mental notes about the stuff I was unsure of. And I'll stop mm -hmm. like every three questions and, and go through my mental list again. And I'm like, what are the, what, what are the things I'm going to go look up after the exam? It's that one question about that layout attribute. It's that other question about plugin sort order or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll like keep going over that list in my head. And as soon as I leave the exam, I'll go scribble it all down and then, uh, mm -hmm. and, and go look up those topics. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously I, I will put the anecdote out there that it's, we don't want to share that with anybody else, but absolutely that's, <clears throat> that's, that is important to do. And, um, I will say you have a much brighter brain than me, Chris, because I have a horrible time keeping mental notes through taking the test. Like I just, I have a horrible time with that. So, um, that's good. It's, uh, you can, I mean, you can only hold somebody in the cash. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you'd say my cash is pretty limited in size then. <laughs> <clears throat> that's good. Um, so let's say you did this and, and even if you didn't do this, uh, a couple of things here to call out. So, um, work through the Adobe documentation. Every, uh, there is documentation for every test. And I think most of these tests now have their own practice tests. So you now have an additional resource for practice tests, not only the Swift auto practice test, but also the Adobe practice test. Um, I, I have heard in a number of cases, just so you're aware that the practice test is used on the Adobe site. The Adobe practice test is a little bit easier. Um, just keep that in mind. But it's in the exact same format. Like the screen looks the same. Um, and yeah, it's it's something, it's it's another option for practice tests. So the, uh, but obviously then if that's at that point, purchase the study guide if you want um, or the course. Uh, the course is that, we put out the goal of those is to as quickly as possible, educate you on the important concepts that you need to know in order to take the test, give you practical exercises. Um, but also we do go a step above and beyond. We're very careful with how much time we allot to this, but we, it is our goal to train you above and beyond so that you understand best practices. You understand not just the material that's on the test, but 
how you come to this knowledge of getting this material in your head, as well as why this is important. Uh, and, and I think those how and why questions are incredibly in, in, are there invaluable in order to be able to truly uh, master a subject. And that is the goal with those courses. Uh, Chris, you can definitely speak to that. Uh, you've, you've been in the just, trenches on this. I mean, I was just sitting here thinking about my uh, high school English teacher that, that drove <laughs> home the point that he can, he can teach us facts, but the most important thing he could teach us is how to keep teaching ourselves through the rest yep. of our lives. And that's like, that's what I want to be a huge emphasis on our training material is, is working with Magento. Mm -hmm. uh, that one of the key components of being successful in it is just knowing how to, when you encounter this problem or this bug or this thing you yep. need to implement, knowing how to find those answers for yourself. Uh, Cause you're, Absolutely. Just, you're never going to memorize every component of the system and every, mm -hmm. every shred of the documentation. And so like thinking in Magento is the, is the crucial thing of working in Magento. And so that's like, that's something I really want to make sure we're providing in our training courses is, is uh, show, showing how we got there, like how, how, how we searched through the core code and found this thing uh, or, or how we, how we, you know, learned more about this certain component. Yes. So that's, Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the kind of employing that day to day as you work with the platform is, is going to do the most preparing you mm -hmm. for the exam. Absolutely. You are hundred percent right, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the other thing is uh, like Joseph already, he jumped the gun, Joseph Lee, he's a brilliant guy. And that's why he had to, he had to drop this in there first, which was great. Um, upgrade to the next harder test. So if you're on professional right now, use this as the opportunity to get up to this next test, like take your time at it and, uh, focus on it or I meaning you employ the same strategy, but you know, if you're on expert, go up to master architect, just do it. Um, this is, this is a great opportunity. And I know I'm kind of stealing thunder from our certification challenge next year, which again is the, uh, encouragement there, which ultimately, hopefully if everybody does have their certifications renewed, maybe we don't need it. But on the other hand, I know how time works. There'll be some expirations that happen. Just, just how that goes. So get up to that next harder test. Joseph Leedy's doing it. Um, take your, take, uh, take your time at it, schedule in uh, consistent study time, 15 minutes a day worst case, but, uh, focus ideally more like a half an hour, the jump from extra expert to architect is a significant jump, <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. Don't let that hold you back. Just do it. Um, and then don't be afraid. I, I, I don't think there's any reason to be afraid or disappointed unless you're going for those badges, uh, to drop all tests that are no longer relevant to you. The thing to keep in mind here is that Adobe now has basically three badges. That's all they have is professional, um, expert and master. So as far as the old days, you had like a badge for every test that you've taken. Those kind of look nice as a little bit of a collection that doesn't happen anymore. So there's just three badges, uh, get the highest badge that you can possibly that you want. Um, and, and they, all three badges kind of look the same. So all you really need is one badge on your LinkedIn profile, as opposed to the what seven or eight that existed pre Adobe. Um, very good. Let's see here. I want to go quickly give an update on ours. Chris, I guess I don't, you're, you're the one that's been heading this stuff up here lately. I don't know if that's, if you want to take a shot at it. Um, so, well, I mean, as you, as you know, I've been, uh, neck deep in, in our training courses. Uh, oh, yeah. so like up, updates to our practice tests and our study guides, those, those, those predate my involvement, but I think we're pretty much up to date on those, except maybe the mm -hmm. just very latest round of, uh, of updates they've announced. Um, but we, we have our, our new iteration of the professional developer course, uh, mm -hmm. that was just released that should be yep. up to date with the current version of the exam and, um, our expert developer course as well is going to be available in what, within the next three weeks, I think. Yep. I think somewhere in there. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Your slide says next two weeks. Now oh. I got to make sure and make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> two to three weeks. It's all good. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I think that that's great. We, um, we are, we've been working toward working our tails off to get this stuff done. Um, honestly, I've been a bottleneck myself and that's why we're now making really good progress because Chris is here and he's just kicking butt, getting this stuff done, doing a fantastic job. I'm really proud of him. 
Um, I see a couple of questions in here about ADO 718. Um, that is the new master architect test. Um, we will be starting on that once we finish up expert developer. So keep jumping on Chris's desk. You can find him on Twitter and all that, you know, ping him and all that. Um, but he, he is, uh, he's working on this and that'll be his next priority once he gets past, um, expert developer. Um, and I'm hopeful to have this out by the end of October. That gives you two months to study and prepare for this. We'll see if that happens. I'm not holding him to it or anybody. This is a difficult test. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot on this that, you know, it's, it's going to take some serious effort, but, um, it's, it's, it's good. It's good knowledge to have as well. So hopefully I'm hopeful. I'm an optimist, but I'm hopeful we'll have master architect, um, done by the end of October. We'll see on that. So, um, that's just, that's pure guessing. And we'll see if that we'll see if that happens. Um, quick question. Uh, Robert Malia said, no discounts for Adobe partners. You are 100% correct to bring this question up because there is a 30, 33% uh, for that is available, uh, discount available for Adobe partners. So make sure to email, I think it's sppHelp at adobe.com and they will get you discount codes for purchasing it. So in other words, uh, I'm guessing a good number of you do work for Adobe, uh, Adobe partners. So you do get a 33% discount which it's better than nothing. Um, all right. Well, uh, that is, that wraps up pretty much what we wanted to talk about here today, as far as, um, recertifications. And I'm just going to state, ladies and gentlemen, you got to get certified, recertified. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's the reality of what, what is what we're up against. Um, uh, you know, feel free to kindly ask for extensions, which I don't think anybody would, big, well, anybody on the, in the community would be against that. Uh, but we, uh, there's no recertifications at this point. So it's going to take re studying and getting that test taken. Uh, it's going to take some time for you, but it's not a bad thing. You have to look at it from that perspective. Yes, there is some money involved, but past that, it's just not a bad thing. Um, you, it's good to get back in the code on a deeper level. It's good to read, to understand these new topics. You are not going to be hurt one small bit. Um, as such, just get in there, study it, set yourself a deadline. I would suggest taking your test mid to early to mid December. So that you, you have a little bit of uh, wiggle room, but at the end of the day, if you fail it, let's say you took it December 31st and you fail the test, your certification rolls off on January one. It's like, Oh shoot, I don't have a certification anymore, but then you go take it uh, first week or two in January. So, okay. You're window of being certified lapses by a week. What is a problem though, is if you don't take your test by December 31st and you don't do anything about it all next year, then you're hundred percent not certified. Um, and that's, that's really the problem. That's what Adobe wants to separate out. I believe they want to see the people who are not putting effort into this and those people should not be certified. They should not have a certification on the record anymore. And so Differing opinions, perhaps on that one, but um, the goal is to show this certification applies right now to this person, and uh, that's that's the goal. So let's do. We have any questions uh, here? Let's see here. Uh, Vladislav, let's see here. What's the main difference between these cert three certifications? Is it only complexity, or just additional topics to be covered? Um, the three certifications. I assume you're talking about professional developer, expert developer versus master architect. If that, if my assumption is correct there, um, there are some more topics. Master architect does cover commerce only functionality. So, uh, target, uh, related, uh, related, pro uh, related product rules. Um, it'll cover like, say like abandoned carts. It's going to have some B2B stuff on there, uh, shared catalogs. Um, all that stuff is then it's not like in my experience, it's not like at a deep level, but it does take knowledge or investigation of those those subjects but the ones that are similar the ones that carry over between um all three of those tests professionals going to be the easiest questions be more memorization uh, like what features are available to do this uh, uh expert is going to be more scenario based uh like given this scenario here's what you do and um Master architect, I have not taken this test, but I'm assuming it's going to be more like, how would you design this type of a solution? What steps would you want a developer to take? So that you can see there's a significant knowledge difference between all three of these levels. Those verbs we talked about are uh, yep. 
you know, going to be a difference with describing versus demonstrating. Mm -hmm. I mean, most if it's an identically named test, professional developer, expert developer, you can pretty much expect that the complexity is the main difference. But they have, yep. I mean, they have the detailed breakdown of the of the topics to mm -hmm. be covered, you know, on the certification pages. So you can you can look and compare what topics they say are part of the of the material. Yep, absolutely, very good point. The other uh, thing to think through is perhaps look at like the professional test is like being, uh, if we have a scale of one to five, one being the most easy questions, five being the most difficult, you're going to have maybe an average of one and a half as far as the question difficulty. So qu some questions be one, maybe you have a couple that are three. Um, they're, they're on the, definitely on the easier side. Of course, for, uh, expert will kind of hit the middle and then master is going to be like the four to five difficulty questions, like really difficult overall. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that's what, oops, I forgot to put that one up there. That would be what I would say there. Uh, look at, oh, John Doe, what a great name. Um, if you haven't gotten certified so far, should you wait for the next year to get certified for the first time? Fantastic question. Uh, no, <clears throat> just go ahead and get certified. All certifications now roll off. Oh, I should know this. It's either a year or two, um, after you take it. So once you take the test, um, it's just that date is set from the date you take it today. Uh, if you if you end up, um, how do I say this? It, so the reason December 31st is such a big deadline is this was the aggregated, this was the set deadline for everybody who took their certifications, say two years or three years, maybe even four years ago. Like, so it's all this, this, this massive group of credentialed people that now have December 31st as their final set deadline. So um, that's why this date is important. But if you take you have taken your test in the past year or so, um, and I think it's two years. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think it's if you were looking at I that. was just I, that's I was looking up mine to see if I can find that information because I just got my professional certification again. I was going to see if I could find the expiration date. Two okay. years sounds right. I think I think it is two years. Um, so, yeah, it'll be two years from tomorrow if you take your test tomorrow and get it passed. Very good. Any other questions uh, here today? Two if years. Not. Okay. Just ver just verified it. Very very good. Uh, yeah, I should have had that in my notes. That is good. Thank you. Um, if there are no other questions, then we will uh, wrap it up for today, and we'll be doing another ninja training here next month. It's our custom, our practice, first Wednesday of every month, ten o'clock Central Time. And we will have a time change, I guess not next month, central time. And we are going to, we're back here with more technical material. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for joining. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you all. Um, been really excited to have Chris here on the, the conversation with the conversation as well. You're going to be seeing more from him, hearing more from him. Uh, again, like I said earlier, he is absolutely, um, brilliant and has okay let me just put it this way you start when as, as, as a company starts out say the president or whatever fancy title you want to give him uh has is probably the most smart person in the room just generally speaking but it has been one of the most the greatest honors of mine i would say as we've grown and and we we've i have the privilege of working with a lot more people now I, I'm, I think I'm the dumbest person in the room now. And I love that. Like, I mean, I, I love the, the challenges that Chris brings what he's, what he is able to dig up out of the code, uh, the way he presents stuff. Like it's, it's really, really good. And so in that way, I'm just absolutely thrilled that he is, um, here that he is, uh, the great work that he's doing out. And you're going to be, like I said, you're going to be seeing a lot more of him over the coming uh, times. Oh, sorry, Benjamin. Um, you have to go watch that whole thing again. Definitely. So anyways, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for uh, joining us. Thanks, Chris, as well, for coming on here. I stole you away from expert developer there for a little bit. <laughs> Thanks uh, for having me. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. It was, it was good seeing you.